I'm Shireen El Feki, author of Sex in the Citadel, Intimate Life in a Changing Arab World. I spent five years traveling across the Arab region talking to people about sex, what they do, what they don't, what they think, and why. Now, the reasons for this were both personal and professional. I am half Egyptian, I am Muslim, but I grew up in Canada, very far from my Arab heritage. Like so many people who straddle East and West, I was interested in better understanding my Arab roots. The fact that I chose sex as my lens comes from my work on HIV as a journalist, as a scientist, uh, and also most recently as an advocate as vice chair of the UN's Global Commission on HIV and the Law. I began to look at sex in the Arab region through the lens of HIV and the realization that the taboos around sex are a huge obstacle to confronting what is an emerging epidemic. But beyond the medicalization of sex, beyond sex in terms of attitudes and behaviors, sexuality, which is also bringing in values and beliefs, is an incredibly powerful lens through which to understand any society because it tells you about politics, about economics, about religion and tradition, about gender and generations. In the book, I look at a wide variety of populations who are outside what I call the citadel. And the citadel of which I speak is the fact that the only socially accepted context for sexual activity in the Arab region is marriage, which is approved by your family, approved by religion, and registered by the state. Anything that's outside the citadel is forbidden, and that includes young people who can't afford to marry and therefore have to wait. It includes career women who don't fit gender expectations and therefore find it hard to find a spouse. It includes female sex workers, and of course it includes people who cross the heterosexual line, what we would call LGBTQ populations. And of course that is the subject of uh, the conference that I'm delighted to be attending. But it's important to realize that LGBTQ populations in the Arab region are part of a spectrum of exclusion. And what I discuss in the book is how are we going to find ways to bring people inside the citadel? And in particular, the focus of my book is in Egypt. How are we going to find that flexibility within the framework of Islam? Islam today is presented by many in authority in the Arab region most recently after the uprisings of 2011, as almost a one-size-fits-all, in which there is absolutely no acceptance of any assault on the citadel. You can't move forward on the, these issues. It is black and white. Well, there is much more flexibility than conservatives are willing to acknowledge. Islam is not anti-sex. It recognizes the power of sex, and it sees it as so powerful that it tries to channel it into certain structures. One of those structures is marriage. But between what is haram and what is halal, there are huge possibilities for more open and pragmatic interpretations, be it on questions of uh, abortion, for example, or masturbation, or even the incendiary topic of homosexuality. There is much more flexibility than authorities are willing to acknowledge. And so what I'm calling for in my book, not just for LGBTQ populations, but for all populations, inside and outside the citadel, start questioning these received wisdoms in sexual life. Start asking very hard questions of the taboos because it is part of a bigger project we are all engaged in to reform and renew Arab society. This is a process which has been catalyzed by the uprisings of 2011 and is an ongoing process. It is the work of, of a generation. But just as people now feel much freer to question politics in Egypt and the wider Arab world, and starting to ask questions about religion, because now religion and politics are connected through political Islam, I am encouraging people, and I hope my book will be a very small contribution to that, start asking these questions of sexual life. Because if we do not anchor justice and freedom and dignity and equality and privacy and autonomy in the bedroom, we will find it very hard to achieve it outside the bedroom in political, economic, social, and cultural life.